Hi folks, welcome back to the show and today we are fitting best part of 200 linear meters of skirting board in a completely replastered 1920s semi-detached house. There's a lot of skirtings, baseboards to refit. I've already done this room and I'm going to take you through a few tips for how I go about doing skirtings and hopefully that'll benefit you if you're ever doing a job like this. you leave a gap between the skirting board and the floor or do you have it flush up against the floor? Now just to test it, it's probably the worst one I've done all day but... Uh... <laughs> so just to show you what we're kind of shooting for here to give you an idea of what this looks like pre-cork. Fear not folks, there's going to be plenty cork getting used on this if you're wanting to see like perfect skirtings being done without the use of any cork then you're following completely the wrong channel. In an older property like this you know you've, you're gonna have cork and filler there's not a straight wall in sight look at the fireplace here you know we've got a massive kind of bow in the middle here which uh, is uh, yeah, a little bit annoying I suppose but because uh, that was replastered that should have really been plastered straight but such is life character it all adds character doesn't it one of my aims here is to not end up with too many kind of physical fixings because they're a pain in the neck the one wall that i did have to was this one this was by far the trickiest wall because we've got the radiator pipes and whatnot so i've actually boxed it out very very slightly to hide the pipes but i think that looks really good you literally you can't see the pipes going up into the radiator at all once that's all fillered and corked and painted it'll look awesome that wall just was so wonky that by the time you'd get one end in and the other end would be sticking out like half a foot so we did end up having to put a few screws into there but okay let me take you through how I approach a job like this what I do is I go for the easy wins first so the easy wins are the ones that just need butt cuts at the end so there's no like just square cuts at the end of the board my square cuts are the that alcove and that alcove and then this big long board is scribed into there and then this big long board is scribed into there so you're only talking so there's two scribes there and then this big long board here that is scribed into that edge and what else can I show you around the fireplace pre-assembled glued up mitres it's the, the best way to do it glue up your mitres with uh, CA glue pre-assemble it and then just push the whole lot in um, again because nothing's square unfortunately I did have to use a couple of fixings one on, on either side just to kind of push that board against the wall but other than that I did also have to scribe that board to the floor because the floor was so uneven at the bottom there but uh, yeah it's worked out pretty well I think so what I'm gonna do I'm gonna take you downstairs I'm gonna do the downstairs hallway next and I'm gonna talk you through give you a few tips for getting perfect scribes really quickly and um, yeah I'll talk you through kind of my thought process with doing a job like this so downstairs hallway now one of the considerations downstairs is that eventually we're gonna have hardwood flooring going down so I'm only going to very delicately tack the skirtings to the walls because these ones are going to have to come back off again. We're temporarily putting down some cheap carpet just to get us by until the extension's done. Then we're going to have to rip that carpet up and then we'll be doing wood flooring all the way through downstairs. But we can't do that yet because we want that to flow through into the extension and until the extension's built we don't want to be doing that. So down here the skirtings need to go in before the carpets can go in. So I can't leave it with no skirtings and plus you don't want to be living in a house with, with no skirting boards. I'm just using L Ultra Cheapo No Nonsense Grab Adhesive Water Based. The water based ones tend to be not quite as high strength as the uh, solvent based ones I've found. With these by the way on the architraves I think I forgot to mention I used up a full tin of a tub of glue, tube of glue per architrave so work it out I had 17 architraves to do so yeah 17 tubes of glue just on the architraves 
skirtings, they are probably three to four tubes per room, I would have said. Depends how flat your walls are. The, the other thing about the solvent-free glue is that you've got a bit longer working time. The solvented glue, it skins very, very quickly. So you haven't got, it's great in that it gives you a very, very solid um, glue joint and it dries much quicker than the water-based one and it's much stronger, I think. But you haven't got as long to work with it and it'll rip all the plaster off the wall when we come to redoing the floors down here. This is future me interjecting and uh, yeah, just to let you know, we have had horrendous problems with that glue. I don't know if it's because the weather's been too hot or it's because it's freshly primed walls, but I thought it being primed walls would actually help matters. I, I know I wanted these to just be temporarily tacked on, but I didn't want them to literally just fall off. And a lot of the skirtings, unfortunately, with that glue, have literally just fallen off and uh, yeah. So I cannot recommend the solvent-free, no-nonsense grab adhesive. It's been horrific, really bad. All of this I'm gonna have to redo, which is an absolute pain in the backside. So yeah, I wanted to be honest about that and uh, let you know my appraisal of the no-nonsense grab adhesive. The solvent-free stuff, useless, absolutely rubbish. So let me explain my thought process for what's going on down here. First of all, I like to get my easy wins out the road. So this one's gonna be square cuts on both sides across here. We'll then do a mitre, not a mitre, a scribe into the left-hand side and we'll have an outside. Well, actually, no, we're not gonna do an outside mitre because I think if I do skirting board running around this edge, down the bottom here, the door's gonna bind on it. I'll show you what I mean. So if it means that when you're opening the door, you see that's about skirting board width there, that's going to be hitting off the skirting. And we don't want that. We want it so that the door can open wide without any problems. So I'm not going to put skirting at this bottom corner. I will have to do something. I'll probably just do a little white PVC trim, the sort of stuff that you put around windows. I'll probably just put a little white PVC trim there and I'll do a return on the skirting at the edge here so that it'll be scribed in on the left and just a return put on the right. That's easy enough. Over on this side, the quick win is gonna be the back side here because then we'll push up the scribe joint on the left and we'll push up the scribe joint on the right, but the back will just be a butt joint on either side, but like a square cut on either side. But I am going to bring it out a little bit because there's going to be like, well, there's a router down here and there's going to be a little kind of comms area. The fiber comes up here. Over here, we're going to have at least two cables that need to come through. We've got the BT cable here. That'll be going to the BT box, which can just go on the skirting board or slightly above the skirting board. It doesn't really matter, but I'll bring the cable through the skirting. And then we've also got the virgin cable over there and that'll come through the skirting as well. Another nice easy wind down here, dead easy square joint on either side and here, uh, jury's out. I'll scribe it, it'll be fine.
Right, I'll talk you through the scribe and then I'll show you how quick it is to do and it will be a perfect scribe. So I will uh, first of all just clamp this to the workbench, it just makes life a little bit easier. I've cut a 45 on that end and the reason I've cut the 45 is because that shows you where you need to cut basically and then I'm going to be doing a slight back cut, in other words I'm holding the jigsaw at a slight angle Slight back cut, it makes it easier to sand afterwards. And then I'll show you my little secret weapon to get the scribe absolutely perfect. I think I can just about get in there. Make sure you've got pendulum action switched off. I'm using the jigsaw upside down so that I can see where I'm cutting. So it's a normal blade, it's not a down cut blade. I'm just gonna slow the speed down a little bit on the jigsaw. So I don't want it running away. camera is getting in my road wherever I'm doing this. So. And then magic bit. All I've done because I'm doing a lot of these. I've glued, spray glued some sandpaper, 100 grit sandpaper onto a scrap piece of skirting. The important thing here when you're doing this is to make sure that your tops are lined up. And then just to test it, uh, it's probably the worst one I've done all day, but uh, <laughs> it's like trying to do this when you've got a camera set up, but uh, yeah, I'm happy enough with that. And then as I say, I'm going to have to get a little bit creative here, since the wonderful Virgin Man has put um, the cable exactly where the, the skirting board sits. If you're going to be drilling holes for cables to come up, make sure it comes up behind the skirting board, not in, like not directly under it. And then while I'm at it, it's butted up tight to the right hand side, so I've just put a little mark there so I can see where that needs to be cut. There we go, that's quite nice and neat. I've tried not to put too much glue on because as I say, these need to come back off when we do the, the new flooring, but it'll absolutely do the job for now. I've ended up kind of using the adhesive as cork. You shouldn't really do that, but it's just because I wanted to show you it finished, but you should really use cork along the top because the adhesive isn't particularly flexible, but I wanted to show you it done. I'm gonna plow on, get the rest of this room done. I still need to do the little return joint at that side, and I've got another little scribe to do there, and we've got the scribe and radiator pipes to work around at the bottom there. So I will come back to you once I've done all that.
I might as well do a quick kind of walk and talk while I'm tidying up a bit, a bit of an interim tidy up, because the dust is biblical from a job like this. I figured I'd answer a couple of questions that are bound to come up in the comments. Um, first of all, skirting boards, do you leave a gap between the skirting board and the floor, or do you have it flush up against the floor? Personally, I prefer to have it flush up against the floor. Where has my dustpan and brush gone? You know what it is? Stuff just vanishes in this house. So, yeah, I prefer to have it tight to the floor because I think if you leave a gap, the gap just tends to fill with dust and rubbish and then you end up with like a dark border around your carpet. So I prefer not to leave a gap. Certainly in most new builds that I've been in, there's, there's no gap. I haven't seen any issues fitting carpets when there's no gap because I know there's an argument that you can kind of um, fit the carpet vaguely under the, the gap of the skirting board, but I've never ever seen any issues fitting carpets when there's no gap and the carpets look just as good. I think the only vague argument you could give for not leaving uh, sorry, for leaving a gap, is that potentially maybe it can get some sound transmission through the floor, and I guess by leaving a, ca a gap you're kind of decoupling the skirting boards a little bit, because potentially you could get sound travelling through the skirting board and transmitting into the wall and get a little bit of flanking sound that way, so I don't know. Would there be a nominal... It would be inaudible the difference I think. What you would gain from minimizing flanking transmission from the floor to the skirting and then to the wall you would lose by having a gap that sound can get through. So I don't... yeah okay I think I've just talked myself out of that argument. Um, obviously lots of different methods for doing the scribe. I prefer the jigsaw method. I should really have a coping foot on my jigsaw but I've never got around to buying one. Um, you can do obviously a coping saw, but it'll take longer. You can even do an angle grinder. I've seen that being done, works pretty well. I think the jigsaw method is, is as quick as anything else. Trusty miter station, still going. In terms of what the skirting boards are made of, I'm just using MDF, and I think MDF is absolutely fine for trims. Um, the things that MDF doesn't work very well for and the things that MDF works really well for. MDF works really well for trims. It's really easy to use. Um, you've got no issue. I mean, it still expands and contracts a little bit, uh, but nowhere near as much as normal wood. It's much more stable. It's much less likely to be like bent and warped and all sorts of things. I mean, okay, if you can personally select your own timber for skirtings, but I've got, as I say, 200 linear meters of skirting and architrave here, which I've just got delivered on a truck, and there's no way I would have wanted to hand pick all of that. It would have taken us half a day to hand pick all that. The 144, these are much bigger than the skirtings that we're in, but bearing in mind that we've got 2.6 meter ceilings here, so I think. I think that the skirtings and architraves have been replaced before. I don't think this is the first time it's been done because they were very kind of art deco, the ones that were in. And uh, I think these are much more in keeping. They're a better height. And also because they're a, a taller skirting, it covers up a multitude of sins on the walls. And um, as I say, it's just more in proportion with the, the ceiling height. I think it works really well. Obviously before you start doing your skirtings you need to go around all the edges and chip off any plaster snots and things like that. You want the wall to be as flat as possible and when you're fitting them use a spirit level, just a little spirit level on them. Had it two minutes ago. Okay. Imagine this is a little spirit level but when you're fitting them get them plumb. If they're not plumb then you're going to be fighting a losing battle with every single join because every join you'll have gaps. So no matter what, even if you end up with a big gap along the top, but preferably rather than having a gap, and I, I try to dry fit everything, 
doesn't always work out that way, but I try to do a dry fit, check how it's going to sit on the wall, and then if needs be, hack away at the wall so that, the, so that you can get it plumb without leaving too much of a gap at the top. It's not always possible. Sometimes you end up having to hack away so much of the wall that you've got no wall left to attach it onto. So, uh, and then you end up with a gap, which you can cork or filler or whatever, which is fine. But yeah, when you're fitting them, try to get them plumb so that uh, all of your mitres and your, your scribes fit nice and snugly. The other thing as well is che check if it's like a property that you don't know that well. I know this property and I know which floors are level and which floors aren't level. Um, but check your floors for level before you start. So just get a big spirit level, go around all the edges and check. If your floors are level, then you can quite happily just fit your skirting to the floor without having to check whether each individual skirting is level. But if your floors aren't level, you've got a decision to make whether or not you're going to scribe your skirtings to the floor and keep the top of your skirtings level or whether you're going to just follow the un uneven floor. It's down to whatever looks best at the end of the day. Here, I've got the odd floor that isn't level, but it's not far enough out that it warrants uh, doing scribes other than in the bedroom where I've had to scribe around the fireplace, but I haven't scribed anything to make the top of the skirting board level. I've just followed the floor and it looks fine. You kind of get an idea over time of what's going to work and what's not going to work. I think that covers off most of the questions that I'll probably get asked. I bet I've forgotten something. And I think that'll do for the downstairs hall. That's worked out pretty well. Obviously still all the corking and fillering to do. We've got a little bit of a gap at the back. That's actually because the wall indents by quite a long way. I ended up having to like chip away at the plaster quite a bit just to get the board as, as close to the wall as possible. It's just one of those things in older houses. The other thing that was a little bit of a challenge around this radiator was uh, obviously the pipework. You've got the options if the pipework's done like this, and I, I do quite like it because you've got no visible pipes really. The pipes disappear off behind the radiator and you can't really see them. And even like all the way down here, I'm literally sitting on the floor and you can't see the pipes. You'd have to be like lying on the floor, kind of looking under there to see what I've done. So on this radiator, what I did was I nibbled away at the plaster work a little bit to make a bit of a groove in the plaster. And then I put a little notch in the top of the skirtings to let the pipes out. Upstairs, I boxed it out. Did I show you that? So I just used some little 20 mil off cuts of old skirting, old architrave actually, uh, to, just to box it out enough to get the pipes behind. This method is technically neater because on, on this method you can't see the pipes at all. But it does mean obviously that that skirting's away from the wall slightly. So swings and roundabouts, actually I think the boxing method is quicker but obviously if you've got this buttoning up to architrave, then that's potentially going to cause a problem because obviously if this was boxed out here, the skirting would then be further out than the architrave and it would look a little bit naff. So I think I prefer this method if the skirting is buttoning up to architrave and if it's not buttoning up to architrave, I, say, I think boxing it is easier personally. Let me know in the comments which version you think is best, but uh, yeah, both are good, both look good once it's all corked in and uh, painted and finished properly. Behind the door, I decided not to, I did it, I tried it with a return and it looked naff. So I've put the skirting right up to the edge after all. It does mean the door binds a little bit. So you can see it's just hitting the skirting there, but I mean, the door's fully open, so it, it, it's past 90 degrees at the point that it's hitting the skirting. But as I say, it looked naff with the return on it. I think it looks much better like that. As I say, once it's all corked in and looking nice. I did actually cork this little bit with um, adhesive just to uh, finish it off and show you what it would look like once it's all vaguely finished. But obviously this still all needs primed and painted and fillered and carpets need to go in so there's still a lot to do here but uh, yeah that's all worked out 
pretty well. Took me probably about, I mean, this was a bit of a fiddly one. Took about two to three hours to do the downstairs hall here. Um, so I don't know, if you, if you do this for a living, you probably do a whole house in a day. Let us know in the comments. If you do do this sort of trim work literally every day of your life, how long does it take you to do like a typical three bedroom house? So there's still three rooms left, but uh, I think what I'm gonna do just get another quick win in before we pack up for the night and I'll get some of the easy cuts done and glued in and then everything's ready to start with all the scribing and everything tomorrow. But that'll do for today. Let me know what you think in the comments below if you've got any other tips or anything like that for doing skirtings on 1920s walls where nothing is flat and nothing is plumb and nothing is true. But uh, I think once this is all painted, it'll look champion don't forget there's extra stuff over on the member zone where you can support this channel directly and you can get access to extra videos extra content extra articles it's like a subscription based service and you get extra stuff and it kind of keeps the channel ticking over in the event of youtube going belly up or something like that just so i haven't got all my eggs in one basket so it'd be lovely to have you over there in the meantime take care folks i shall see you next time tatty bye